point is my collateral damage versus collateral beauty exercise. And this is an exercise in how to keep perspective. And keeping perspective at the time is extremely important if you don't want to land up in a state of fight or flight or freeze. So about nine months after my husband's death, I was asked to give a Women's Day presentation. And I had been asked and booked about three months after his death. And I think I was completely unthinking at that point, because when I got to this nine month stage, I thought, what was I thinking? Why would I want to give a talk about my husband's death and what happened to us? And I got quite angry. In fact, I went into post-traumatic stress. I couldn't breathe. I was shaking like a leaf. It just brought up everything for me that I had been through. And this was a very messy experience, as you can imagine. And now I'd been asked to put a very messy, non-linear experience into a linear presentation, which was unbelievably difficult. And of course, I really had to do a lot of soul searching. And when I say I got angry, I got angry. <laughs> in fact, I got so angry. I was sitting in bed one Sunday morning and I went, I don't know what there is to talk about here. What can I share that's of any use to anybody else? Because there's been so much collateral damage. So I folded a piece of paper in half vertically and I wrote collateral damage on the left and collateral beauty on the right. And I started on the damage side because that's where I was sitting in my head and I started writing down everything I could think of that was negative about my husband's death. From the loss of my children's father to the loss of my husband to the, the fact that we would never be grandparents together. The loss of our home. We couldn't stay in our home. We had to sell our home because my youngest son who was held at gunpoint um, and who found his dad's body he could never come home again. So we were out of our home. And every negative emotion that I could think of, everyone who dumped their negativity and their own negative stories on us after my husband's death, you name it, the poor customer service in wrapping up his estate, becoming a number, not a person. Uh, there was just so much. And I wrote and I wrote and I wrote for two and a half pages. The list went on and on and on until I was exhausted and I couldn't write another thing. And then I thought, well, I wonder if there's any beauty. And I started on that side of the page. Any positive emotion, any gift that I had received, not baskets of flowers, of which there were many, but any gift of positivity, any gift of hope, any anything, people who'd walked into my life from the past, new people who'd walked in, and do you know, I wrote five pages of collateral beauty. It completely blew me out of the water that there were so many sparks in the ashes. And that was where all my opportunities and my possibilities were sitting. That became the roadmap for my future. So I really would like to encourage you immediately after this presentation to take a piece of paper, fold it in half, write COVID-19 at the top and put collateral damage on the left, collateral beauty on the right. And I want you to do this exercise for COVID-19. I did this exercise for COVID-19 just before going on radio. I do a lot of media interviews every week and I was going on radio to talk about lockdown. This was at about two or three weeks into lockdown. And I thought this would be a great exercise to share with the listeners. So while I was waiting for the presenter, I was already on the line. I could hear her wrapping up the previous slot. I had a little scrap of paper next to me and I wrote collateral damage, collateral beauty, quickly wrote down 10 things for me in terms of COVID-19 collateral damage. And then I thought, well, I better hurry up now because I'm about to go on air. So I only did 10. Then I went on to the beauty side and I started writing down all the possibilities and opportunities and the good stuff around collateral, uh, the collateral beauty for COVID-19 for me and my family. And once again, I got to twice the number of items on the positive side to the negative side. And it, it blew me away again. And I was able to share that with the listeners on radio. And 
I do encourage all of my audiences to go and do this exercise in perspective. It's hugely valuable in terms of keeping perspective, knowing that not everything that's happening to you is bad. That if you have opportunity eyes, if you can change the lens through which you are looking, you really can change the outcome of what's going on. So go and do that exercise. You will find it hugely beneficial and don't just do it for you. If you're married or in a relationship, do it together as well. So do it a second time. And if you have got children, sit down with your kids at the dining room table and do this exercise as a family. You know, one of the things, one of the gifts for me of COVID-19 has been the fact that my children who are now 20 and 25 came home for lockdown. When will I get such an opportunity again to be with my grown-up sons? And it was for eight weeks we were locked down together. And it was the first time since my husband's death that we were all together for a continuous, unbroken a period of time. And we got to knit together again as a family in a very, very different way. So that is something I could never have created for myself. It is one of the big bonuses that COVID-19 has given me on a personal level. So you can start making notes um, as to anything that comes to mind as I'm talking that you might want to put on your collateral beauty, collateral damage list. So yes, COVID-19 is a catalyst for change. We have never been here before and we need to be curious about what's coming. I'd like to suggest something to you and it's very important the kind of words that we use in our conversations with our colleagues, in our conversations with our families. Are we talking about being in a war? If you are, I think you need to think about the fact that when you are feeling like you're under siege, when you feel like you are at war, it does something to your body chemistry and you become very, very defensive. The only way to get out of where we are positively is to be responsive, to be proactive, to co-create the future together and to decide that we are going to co-create amazing through collaboration. And I'd like to suggest that you look at where you find yourself right now as a company and as individuals, as families, as explorers in a very new world. You see, Christopher Columbus decided to strike out to go and find the Americas, knowing that there was probably land somewhere across the ocean, but he was prepared to leave the shores, to leave the map of everything he knew. And we are kind of there right now. We're on the edge of everything we know, and we are stepping out into the unknown where we have never, ever been before. And if we can view this more as an adventure than a war, it's a much more positive set of words and it evokes a more positive set of emotions inside us. I believe that during traumatic times, it's an amazing opportunity for self-mastery. We're going through a perfect storm right now. We're not in control of the external disruption that is happening to us, but we can take some form of control of our responses to this perfect storm. So I'd like to encourage you to be curious at this time. Curiosity is the antidote to fear, believe it or not. So every day when you wake up, I would like you to ask yourself, I wonder how today might surprise. I know that sounds like a strange question, but let me tell you, for the first two years after my husband's death, I used to wake up every morning and wonder what the hell had happened to my life. I wasn't living in my home. My kids were, one was overseas, one was at university. Most nights I was eating alone from having a family of four. I was now alone. And the only way I could get through was to wake up every morning and be curious about this adventure of who am I without Simon? 
Who am I? How's my life going to unfold? And I started becoming curious and asking myself in the morning, I wonder how today is going to surprise me. And then at night, I want you to sit on the edge of your bed as you get into bed. And I want you to ask yourself, how did today surprise me? How did today surprise me? And I think this is worthy of keeping a little notebook on your bedside table and writing down one thing every day that has surprised you or one thing you have learned or done differently today. So be curious. And this is a moment for reinvention and learning new things. What can I do differently? What do I need to learn how to do? My learning curve in the first three weeks of lockdown was like that. From standing on physical stages, now I had to be pouring myself down this tiny little camera. I don't have any feedback. Guys, I can't see you. You know, and that's tough for a presenter. If I'm using other platforms like Zoom, I could see you. But for the most part, most of my webinars are done on a platform where I cannot see my audience. And I've had to suck it up. I've had to really work with what is and not wish for what isn't. So in the same vein, you are having to reinvent how to do business in a virtual way. You can't meet as teams as you normally would. If you are in a team, you can't be micromanaged anymore. You are having to reinvent being Brand Me Inc. You are like your own business right now. And you have no leader or team leader micromanaging you who's in the same office. You're having to take responsibility for everything you do every single day. You're having to show up and you're having to do what needs to be done. So this is important. Actually, I'll tell you an interesting statistic that when we are under in trauma, if you can be conscious and awake and aware when you are going through something traumatic, you can learn at a rate of 200% faster than on a normal day. That is if you are open to it. So if you are feeling like a victim, that is not going to happen to you. But if you're feeling like an explorer, it's highly possible that you will be able to harness all this potential at a much higher rate and pace than you normally would. What I have found with the learning curve during COVID is it goes like this and then it plateaus out. And then it goes like this again. So we have to keep upskilling and upgrading ourselves as we go along. And most importantly, point number three is that we need to take responsibility for this journey, personal responsibility. Just like my friend said to me that I'm responsible for those dots. I have to go and create those dots for myself. Every single one of you has to go and create the dots into the future with COVID-19 for yourselves. Don't wait for somebody else to make the decision for you. Don't wait for somebody else to tell you what to do. You've got to get on this bandwagon and say, what is it that I need to do? What is it that I need to shift and change? It's all, there's a, there's a saying that says, if it's going to be, it's up to me. And that is something that we need to Keep in mind, if it's going to be, it's up to me.